Dysentery is a medical condition that involves inflammation of the intestines, particularly the colon, and results in severe diarrhea accompanied by blood or mucus. At its core, dysentery is an infection of the digestive system that results in inflammation of the intestines. This occurs when harmful organisms invade the lining of the intestines, causing tissue damage. This infection is often caused by bacteria, parasites, or viruses. However, bacterial and parasitic causes are the most common. When the intestines are inflamed, it leads to the hallmark symptom of dysentery, which is frequent, loose, watery stools that often contain blood, mucus, or both. The term dysentery actually comes from ancient Greek, meaning bad intestine, which accurately describes the condition's effects on the digestive tract. Dysentery is more common than you might think, especially in areas with poor sanitation and limited access to clean water. It's a significant health concern in many developing countries, where it can spread rapidly through communities. In these regions, dysentery is a leading cause of childhood illness and death. However, it's important to note that dysentery can occur anywhere in the world, including developed nations, though it's less common in areas with good hygiene practices and clean water supplies. Types of dysentery. The primary types of dysentery are classified based on their cause. Here are the main types. Number 1. Bacillary dysentery. Bacillary dysentery, also known as shigellosis, is the most common form of dysentery worldwide. It is caused by bacteria, primarily Shigella species. It's a highly contagious type and can spread quickly in areas with poor sanitation. Number 2. Amoebic dysentery. This type is caused by a parasitic amoeba called Entamoeba histolytica. While less common, it tends to be more severe and can lead to complications if left untreated. Number 3. Other types. While less common, dysentery can be caused by other organisms like Salmonella, E. coli, or parasites such as Gerbia. Causes of dysentery. As mentioned earlier, dysentery is typically caused by either bacteria or parasites that infect the intestines. These pathogens are usually transmitted through the fecal-oral route, meaning that tiny particles of feces containing the infectious agents somehow make their way into a person's mouth. This transmission can happen in several ways. Contaminated water is a major culprit, especially in areas without proper water treatment facilities. When people drink water that contains these pathogens, they can quickly become infected. Similarly, food can become contaminated if it's washed with contaminated water or handled by someone with the infection who hasn't properly washed their hands. Poor hygiene practices significantly contribute to the spread of dysentery. If people don't wash their hands thoroughly after using the bathroom or before preparing food, they can easily spread the infection to others. In some cases, dysentery can also spread through direct contact with an infected person. This is particularly common among young children in daycare settings or in families where multiple people share close living quarters. It's worth noting that certain factors can increase a person's risk of developing dysentery. These include malnutrition, which weakens the immune system, and conditions that reduce stomach acid production, as stomach acid helps kill many ingested pathogens. Symptoms of dysentery. The symptoms of dysentery can be quite distressing and often come on suddenly. The most prominent symptom is frequent, loose, watery stools, often containing visible blood or mucus. This isn't just a mild bout of diarrhea. People with dysentery may need to rush to the bathroom urgently and frequently, sometimes passing stools as often as once an hour or even more. Along with the diarrhea, people with dysentery often experience severe abdominal cramps or pain. This pain can be quite intense and is often described as a gripping or cramping sensation in the lower abdomen. The frequent bowel movements and abdominal pain can be exhausting and debilitating. Other common symptoms include fever and general feelings of illness. Many people with dysentery feel weak, tired, and generally unwell. They might experience nausea or vomiting, further contributing to fluid loss and dehydration. Some individuals also report a loss of appetite. One of the most dangerous aspects of dysentery is how quickly it can lead to dehydration. With the body losing so much fluid through diarrhea, people with dysentery can become dehydrated rapidly if they're not able to replenish fluids adequately. Signs of dehydration include extreme thirst, dry mouth, dark urine, 
dizziness, and in severe cases, confusion or rapid heartbeat. In some cases of amoebic dysentery, the infection can spread beyond the intestines, leading to more severe complications. The parasite can invade the liver, causing an abscess that results in pain in the upper right abdomen, fever, and jaundice. In rare cases, the infection may spread to other organs, such as the lungs or brain, causing potentially life-threatening complications. Diagnosis of Dysentery To diagnose dysentery, a doctor will often ask about recent travel to areas where dysentery is common, as well as any possible exposure to contaminated food or water. The key to definitively diagnosing dysentery is laboratory testing of a stool sample. The patient will be asked to provide a stool specimen, which will be examined under a microscope for the presence of blood cells, mucus, and potential parasites. The stool sample will also be cultured to identify any bacterial pathogens. In some cases, additional tests may be necessary. For instance, if amoebic dysentery is suspected, a blood test might be ordered to check for antibodies against the Entamoeba histolytica parasite. In severe cases, or when complications are suspected, imaging tests like ultrasound or CT scans might be used to check for issues like liver abscesses, which can occur in some cases of amoebic dysentery. Before we continue, if you have been finding the video helpful so far, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. Treatment for dysentery. The approach to treating dysentery depends on the cause and severity of the infection, but the primary goals are always to prevent or treat dehydration and to eradicate the infection. For bacterial dysentery, antibiotics are typically prescribed. The choice of antibiotic depends on the specific bacteria causing the infection and local patterns of antibiotic resistance. Common antibiotics used include ciprofloxacin, azithromycin, or ceftriaxone. It's important to complete the full course of antibiotics as prescribed, even if symptoms improve before the medication is finished. Amoebic dysentery requires a different approach. It's treated with antiparasitic drugs, most commonly metronidazole. This is often followed by a second medication to ensure that all parasites, including those that might be living in the intestinal wall, are eliminated. Rehydration is crucial in the treatment of dysentery. In mild to moderate cases, oral rehydration solutions can be used. These specially formulated drinks contain the right balance of salts and sugars to help the body absorb water more effectively. In severe cases, or when the patient is unable to keep fluids down, intravenous fluids may be necessary. In addition to these specific treatments, symptomatic relief is an important part of managing dysentery. Over-the-counter medications to reduce fever and relieve abdominal cramps may be recommended. However, it's important to note that antidiarrheal medications are generally not recommended in cases of dysentery, as they can prolong the infection by preventing the body from expelling the infectious agents. Diet plays a role in recovery from dysentery as well. During the acute phase of the illness, it's often recommended to stick to easily digestible foods and to avoid dairy products, fatty foods, and high-fiber foods that might irritate the intestines. As symptoms improve, a gradual return to a normal diet is usually advised. For most people who receive prompt and appropriate treatment, the prognosis for dysentery is good. Symptoms typically begin to improve within a few days of starting treatment, though it may take a week or more for bowel habits to return completely to normal. However, in severe cases or in vulnerable populations like young children, the elderly, or those with compromised immune systems, dysentery can be life-threatening if not treated promptly. Prevention of dysentery. In terms of prevention, good hygiene practices are essential for reducing the risk of dysentery. This includes washing hands thoroughly with soap and water after using the bathroom, before eating, and after coming into contact with potentially contaminated surfaces. In areas where clean water is not readily available, boiling or treating water before drinking can help reduce the risk of infection. Proper food handling, such as cooking food thoroughly and avoiding raw or undercooked items, is also important in preventing dysentery. Now, we want to hear from you. Have you or someone you know ever experienced dysentery? How did you manage the symptoms and recover? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.